Hey guys, today I am going to do my most requested video I've ever had, which is my bookshelf tour. The top recommended books will be coming at some point, I don't know when, possibly around the summertime when that's when most people read. Um, but today I thought I'd do my bookshelf tour because today, uh, or when I put this up, will be my one year anniversary on YouTube. So because of that I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been watching my videos for a year, it means so much to me. Thank you to the people who have subscribed to me right at the beginning, you really gave me the confidence to keep making videos and thank you to all the people, new people who have subscribed recently, I can't believe the numbers I'm hitting and just thank you everybody who's subscribed, everybody who's made this year on YouTube really really special. And I hope all the future years will be just as fun and that you keep subscribing to me. So I've rambled on enough and now I will get on with my bookshelf tour. So the first thing we need to do is get an overview of the whole bookshelf. So this is it, top to bottom. And just to explain something, when we get closer you'll be able to see that there are words printed on the bookshelf. Basically the white bookshelves were a lot cheaper than the plain brown bookshelves and we thought it would go with my room and that it wouldn't look too bad. But then when we put the box on it we thought it looked a bit plain and a bit, I don't know, just a bit cheap with just plain white. So then we got, oh well I got the idea to write with my Sharpie book quotes all over it. And I haven't finished yet, I'm about three quarters of the way up, but the idea was to make it look like a giant 3D book, so that's why there are book quotes all over it. So guys, this is the bottom shelf of my bookshelf. I'm really sorry if the first like half of this video is kind of shaky, my tripod can't get down as low as the bottom shelf of my bookshelf. And the bottom shelf is just where I keep things which aren't, I don't know, proper books or books that don't fit on the other shelves. So at this end are notebooks, so I've just got a few notebooks, some magazines, uh, did anyone else have these, the Read Me A Poem A Day books? There are a few of them, but I got that as a kid. My Year 9 Math textbook, which um, obviously I've had since Year 9 and not given back to the school, and I'm going to go give it back in my last on my last day, or my second to last day, which is um, this week coming up, um, and because I would have had it for how many years? Four years? Yeah, four years. And then I've got some kids' books that we got down from the loft so I could use them for an English lesson when we needed to bring kids' books in. Uh, so I've got a few of my favourites. I've got Tigers in the Park, Hannah's Helpers, obviously, because I'm called Hannah, um, Five Minutes Peace, Stone Soup, which is one of my absolute favourites, Peace at Last, and The Tiger Who Came to Tea, a book about knitting, another magazine, a teenage read book that tells you how to be a teenager that I bought ages ago, um, Alice in Wonderland and, oh sorry, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Alice Through the Looking Glass. This really cool copy of Peter Pan, got one's Work Your Wardrobe, um, two books on how to teach swimming that were given to me by an older swimming teacher, no, oh and a third book that was given to me on my swimming course, The Great Big Glorious Book for Girls which was a present from my gran, and we've got four textbooky style things on makeup. So, the Makeup Artist Handbook, Style Me Vintage, Compacts and Cosmetics, and The Art and Science of Professional Makeup. And then I've got A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking, which I haven't got around to reading yet, but I really, really want to. And then uh, A Reader's Companion, to which my mum accidentally bought me. Chronicles of Downton Abbey, which has got some really awesome, like, behind the scene photos and stuff. Um, Brian Cox's books, Wonders of the Universe and Wonders of the Solar System, because I love the TV shows of this and I love Brian Cox and I really like stuff like astronomy, so that's why they're there. Guinness Book of World Records and one of my favourite books of all time, Harry Potter Page to Screen, which I've now read about three quarters of, which took a long time, but it is an amazing book. If you are a huge Harry Potter fan, I'd look into asking for this as a present because it is one of the best books ever. Okay, so this is my first shelf of fiction books. So my bookshelf is ordered um, from A to Z, A at the top, Z at the bottom, by author. So obviously I'm going in reverse alphabetical order because I'm going from the bottom to the top. Does that make sense? I think so. So first, Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Zusak. Um, I'd heard so much about this and then I finally decided to read it. It was very, very good, really, really interesting, um, good read. Memoirs of a Teenage Amnesiac, I read this years ago. I really, really like the front cover, that's why I bought it, but it was an okay book. Yeah, also by Gabrielle Seven, the book Elsewhere. Teachers Dead, Daniel Walter's Generation Dead, which is one of those books that came out 
around the time all the hype was going on about the Twilight series. Wasn't that great? Um, the Numbers, this is the second in the series because obviously we're going in reverse order. The Numbers books by Rachel Ward, which are really, really amazing. Next shelf up, by the way, I have two bookcases here. We just um, screwed them together. I have a mini bookcase and a big bookcase. Um, the shelves don't quite line up, but I like it like that. It looks more interesting. So we've got the first book, the first Numbers book, which was on the shelf below. The Colour Purple by Alice Walker, which is a book I had to read for... Um, English coursework and I ended up writing um, one of my coursework essays on it. It's an absolutely amazing book. Jane Eyre Head, which is obviously a take on Jane Eyre. Um, that's kind of a tween age book as I like to call it. Orange is Not the Only Fruit. Again, had to read it for um, my English coursework. Really amazing book again. Clean Break by Jacqueline Wilson. This isn't mine. This is um, an old friend of mine's who I've never given it back to her. That's quite terrible, isn't it? Oh God, I can't get it back in with one hand. Okay, I got it back in, problem solved. And then we've got The Ugly series by Scott Westerfield, which I just finished. It was okay. Um, everyone had said to me the series was gonna be incredible and I wasn't blown away by it, um, but it was okay. I got mismatching books because um, Obviously, the series has been out for a while, and I just asked for the whole series for Christmas, so uglies, pretties. Okay, so now we move on to this shelf, which is a little bit higher up than this shelf. Um, so then we've got the last book in the Ugly series, which is Specials, and then I haven't got around to reading this yet. This is Extras. I thought it was a trilogy, and then it came with Extras. I'm not sure what that is, but they must have just done a Mallory Backman and carried the series on for a fourth one. Bark Belly by Cat Weatherhill. Impossible by Nancy Whirlin, that was a good book. From Bad to Worse, that was a weird book. No and Me by Delphine Me Virgin. Things I Know About Love and Rain by Kate Levan. Um, the Ant Colony and Finding Violet Park by Jenny Valentine. I really liked Finding Violet Park when I read it, which was quite a few years ago. Here I've got the Adrian Mole series, um, so from Weapons of Mass Destruction and, uh, to the Confessions of Adrian Mole. I haven't quite finished the series, I think I got halfway through and then I got distracted by another book, but I will finish it at some point. They were good books. Beloved Immortal, I don't think I've got around to reading yet. Aim High by Tani Gray Thompson. Um, what's called Iris and Ruby, which I picked up in a charity shop. Rosie Thomas, Son at Midnight, which my mum gave to me saying it's really good. The Debutante by Kathleen Tessero, which I don't think I ever finished. I found it a bit boring. Ballet Shoes by Noel Streetfield. I've got a really nice copy that my gran gave me. Beautiful Creatures and Beautiful Darkness, which Beautiful Creatures is that film that's just come out reasonably recently. Um, I really, really, really like the first one. Wasn't that impressed with the second one and haven't read the third one because I wasn't that impressed with the second one. But I like the first one. Shiver and Forever by Maggie Streifarter. I've got Heidi and Heidi Grows Up. These were given to me by my gran. I haven't actually read them yet, um, but I will. But that's Heidi and Heidi Grows Up. And then we've got the beginning of the Lemony Snicket series, a series of unfortunate events. I loved these books. Really, really loved them as a kid. And I have the whole set as I asked for it for a Christmas present, I think. And they are really brilliant books. If you haven't got around to reading them, do. I think they're really good for any age. So this shelf won't take long. It's another mini shelf and it's just four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of a series of unfortunate events. Okay, so we're at a place where my tripod can fit now. So now I have both hands free and I can put books back easier. 11, 12 and 13 of a series of unfortunate events. The Secret Circle by L.J. Smith. And Twelfth Night, my favourite ever Shakespeare. This is my school's copy and I haven't given it back. And I may not give it back. I may, I may not. I do quite quite want to buy my own nice copy, so I probably will give it back. Seven White Gates by Malcolm Savile, which if you like Famous Five and Enid Blyton books, you will love this. This is a really lovely copy that my gran gave me because she said I'd love this book. And it's from, yep, and it's from 1949. And this, this, was a, this is a really, really good book about kids going on an adventure. Out of the Blue by Van Root, which is a book set in World War II, very good. The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy, which I had to read for Year 12 English. Very disturbing, 
but um, very interesting. And now we get to the Harry Potters, so obviously Philosopher's Stone all the way up to Deathly Hallows. I'm really annoyed that we got the adult copy of Deathly Hallows because my mum hated the cover art of the seventh one and to be fair it was pretty horrid, but I don't like the fact it doesn't all line up, these lines don't all line up. I've got them all to six and then it doesn't line up with the seventh one, but you know, so. These are dog-eared and read so much, most of the covers are falling off them and they just look scrappy and well-loved because I love them. And then we've got Tales of Beedle in the Bard, which are such good fairy stories. They're so much better than normal fairy stories. I'm going to read these to my children, they are brilliant. And Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which one of my friends gave me for um, Christmas. And then squished in right at the end is Quidditch Through the Ages, which is actually fantastic piece of where to find them. And Quidditch Through the Ages are actually both really good. And it's so cool to see all the extra detail that J.K. Rowling had but didn't put in the main books. Okay, then we've got A Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling. I actually really like this book. It was a bit slow paced, but I think it was meant to be like that because it was meant to be a very naturalistic book. Um, and I did really, really enjoy it, and it was really good to see J.K. Rowling doing something really different. The Bride's Farewell Traces by Malcolm Ross, which is signed for Hannah. Great to meet you, Malcolm Ross. Or is it Rose? No, it's Rose, sorry. Malcolm Rose. He comes to our school every year. I'm not sure why. I had already read one of his books. I didn't buy it especially. I'd already read one of his books, and then I got it signed by him at school. But I haven't read any of the others. I've got a few of the Louise Renison books, not all of them. I have read all of them but two. Um, I missed out two of the middle ones, but I've got four of them. Then Withering Tights by Louise Renison. Um, I bought this because I really missed the um, Georgia Nicholson books, but then this was a bit of a disappointment compared to them and really quite childish. Um, the Fool's Girl by Celia Reese. And One Moment, One Morning, which is a book I picked up from a charity shop because it had such a cool cover. Look at that. Okay, then I've got four Julia Quinn books. These are the last two in her Bridgerton series, which I've read all of. Um, but these two are actually my favourite ones, the last two. And these are two of the new ones, Just Like Heaven and Ten Things I Love About You. These are such easy to read books. They're set in the 1800s, um, but they're so easy to read um, and I like to call them my aeroplane books because I always seem to um, buy copies just to read on aeroplanes and I read them in literally a couple of hours. I've got Jodie Picoult, 19 Minutes, which I've definitely decided now after reading a few of her books, I don't like Jodie Picoult. She takes really hard subjects like that are okay to write books about, then write about all her books about like cancer, death and all sorts of other things like that and she knows it'll sell. So. I don't like her books, they're not well written, and yes. Okay, next shelf up, I've got another Jodie Picoult book, then The Elements of Modern Philosophy, um, which I bought for my philosophy class, Gervais Finn, Head Over Heels in the Dales, Anna and the French Kiss, which is actually a really good book, Before I Fall by Lauren Oliver, 1984, which I finally got round for reading because I was told to for English, and everyone should read it. I know it's a very, very famous book for being you know, a part of the canon literature, but it's actually really easy to read and a really, really good read. So everybody should read 1984, especially if you like Hunger Games, because it is a dystopian, but it's one of the original dystopians. Okay, then we've got Delirium by Lauren Oliver, which is an amazing modern dystopian. Um, such a brilliant idea. It's about people who have had the part of their brain which um, means they can love taken out their brain, because apparently love is a disease and it causes so many bad things like war and fighting and all sorts. However, the second book was okay, not any good at all compared to the first book, and the third book was a real disappointment. Okay, then we've got Lolita, which I haven't got around to reading yet. One Day, which I haven't got around to reading yet either, but everyone says it's amazing, but I have seen the film, so it kind of gives it away. The Meaning of Life, My So-Called Life, and The Life of Riley by Joanna Nadin, they weren't that good. Blue Aside by Toni Morrison, The Dancing Bear by Michael Morpogo, really good book. The Slender Falls, which is a really, really good book about a dancer who breaks her leg and has to move away to see her gran. And it's all about, I don't know, a bit of magic, a bit of romance, very good book. The Night Circus, I had heard so much about this book and then I finally read it 
and it was really really good okay then we've got twilight new moon short second life of free tanner eclipse and breaking dawn uh yep that's twilight series girl missing enduring love by ian McEwen, and then all these books by geraldine mcguffin mcguffin i'm not sure how to say that damage by sue mayfield which is a good book Life of Pi, which is obviously the film has been made of it recently. And here we've got Wicked Lovely, Fragile Eternity, Ink Exchange and Radiant Shadows, all by Melissa Marr. This was a five-part series. First one, really, really, really good. Second one, good. Third one, okay. Fourth one, bad. Okay, even the third one wasn't that good. Third one, bad. Fourth one, really bad. Never got round to reading the fifth one because I was so put off by the fourth one. I don't think I even finished the fourth one. First one was really good, though. And then An Offer You Can't Refuse by Jill Mansell, which if you're looking for a really easy to read book just in summer, this is a good one. I'd recommend this. Okay, then by Michelle Margarian, Back Home and Goodnight Mr. Tom. Um, I'd wanted to read Goodnight Mr. Tom and this was in an offer with it, so I bought them both. Both incredible. Goodnight Mr. Tom really stuck with me as a really, really brilliant book. The Distributable History of Frankie Laurel Banks, Torment and Passion by Lauren Kate. Um, these are in the wrong place in alphabetical order because they're really big books so they can't fit on the next shelf which is slightly smaller. Hoot by Carl Heisen. Okay then I've got Lottie Biggs is Not Mad, Fallen which I was talking about a minute ago, Pretty Monsters, all of the Narnia books which I've read about three of. Um, I got really put off by which one? I think Prince Caspian it just got a bit boring but I love The Magician's Nephew and The Lion Witch and the Wardrobe. Small Island by Andrea Levy. To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Sushi for Beginners, which I can't remember if I've read. Dubliners by Joyce, which is a collection of short stories. Hannah's Choice, um, which is a true story. Need, Captivate and Entice, which are books about pixies or elves or something. Something like that. Um, they were okay. The Name of the Star by Maureen Johnson. The Snow Child by Owen Ivy, which I asked for for Christmas and haven't got around to reading yet. Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro, amazing, as good as everybody says it is. Three Eva Robotson books, which I really enjoyed um, one of them, and then after reading another two, I realised they're all really, really similar. They're not in a series, but they're all so similar, but if you just read one of Eva Robotson's books, um, then they're good. I'd probably recommend, I think, A Song for Summer. Um, a Brave New World by Adelis Huxley, which is one I had to read for English. Um, how amazing is my copy of it? I really like it. It looks like a science book or something. The Woman in Black, which my mum gave to me. I haven't read because I'm too scared to because I'm a wimp. Spy Girl series, which if, if you are between age between 11 and 14, these books are so good. These three books by Leon Heeren. Um, Stephen Hawking's The Grand Design, which I've read about half of. Um, I, I, I don't know what it is about non-fiction books, but I kind of... I dip in and out of them rather than reading the whole thing. So I've read about half of that. It's very good. Second Start to the Right, which is a book about um, a girl with anorexia. Really interesting. I Was Jane Austen's Best Friend. And Thomas Hardy's Test of the Devils, which I haven't got around to reading yet, but I'm really excited to because my English teacher said it was brilliant. I've read Thomas Hardy's poems and I do really like Thomas Hardy. Okay. Okay, we've got a really nice copy of Wind in the Willows, which was a Christmas present. The Art of Field Thing by Chad Harbeck. The Looks, which I never read the rest of the series because I wasn't that blown away by the first one. Boy Overboard, um, Desire Lines, Sophie's Choice, which is, if you're looking for a fiction book but you wanted to read up on your philosophy, this is a really good one because it just takes you through kind of the history of philosophy through a young girl's eyes. And Helen Forrester's Two Pence to Cross the Mercy. Mer Mersey. Mersey. Um, two books by Becca Fitzgerald, Crescendo and Hush Hush. The Great Gatsby, which I read for year 12, and actually, um, I actually didn't enjoy The Great Gatsby, which kind of disappoints me. I'm really looking forward to going and seeing the film to see the adaption of it, because there are some things I like about The Great Gatsby, like the metaphors and things like that, but I didn't actually enjoy the book, which is kind of disappointing. Charm School and Bad Dreams by Anne Fine. Anne Fine was one of my favourite childhood authors. Um, Bridget Jones, The Edge of Reason. A Bella by, um, who's that by? Beryl Dorothy. Falling by Sharon Dugar, Dugar, Dogar, that was a really weird book. Whisper by Name by Jane Eagland. That looks like I've read it. I can't remember reading that, so obviously it wasn't that brilliant. Before I About Die by Jenny Downham. Very sad, but really interesting book. Um, and Solace the Road by Siobhan Down. Again, really interesting read. 
Then I've got two John Green books, Paper Towns, which I haven't got around to reading yet. I got it for Christmas. It's definitely on my to-read soon list. And Fault in Our Stars. I want to read more John Green books. Plague and Lies by Thomas Grant. This is a five-part series. The first two I've lent to a friend and she hasn't given back. These are the second two and I haven't read the fifth one because it's just... I read it probably at the... I started reading the first one at probably the oldest this series is aimed at so the time it's got to the fifth one which is now I'm kind of too old for it but I may read it at some point to find out what happens because when I first started reading them they were brilliant so had you on the edge of your seat heart beating really fast really good happy ever after by Adele Jarras if I stay and where she went by Gail Foreman Julian Fellows past imperfections room by Emma Donoghue which I'm looking forward to reading at some point this really nice copy of great expectations um, which I found in a charity shop, Just Listen by Sarah Dessen, The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins, which was on my recommended reading list for when I began Philosophy and Ethics at A-level, and is actually such an interesting read. Um, even whatever your beliefs are, whether you are a really strong atheist or really strong theist, um, and anything in between, it's a really interesting read. Dahl's um, books which are for adults, and then there were none by Agatha Christie, which is in the wrong place because it won't fit on the above shelf because it's too big. Um, my Molly Moon books, did anybody else read these when they were younger? These are fantastic books, they're about a girl who learns um, to be able to hypnotise people. Such good books read these or give these to your younger siblings really really good okay we're back to handheld because my tripod won't reach this high and i'm standing on a chair um the last one of those modern model dart rolled dar ones the reason why they got split up is the molly moon book and the agatha christie book are too big to go on this shelf but not buddy these sharon creech books none of them are that great apart from absolutely normal chaos which i really enjoyed the day the whale came by leanne cox which i think is a true story really good. Match by Ali Condi, which is another modern dystopian, really similar to Delirium actually, but um, okay. The Hunger Games, the first one in the series, obviously you will know about The Hunger Games. Who's really excited for the second film coming out? Hunger Games, Hunger Games. Murder on the Orient Express, Perks Being a Wallflower, one of my favourite books of all time. Read it, read it, read it, watch the film, watch the film, watch the film. Just, ah, uh, I love it. It's a beautiful, beautiful, amazing book. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Black Beauty and one of those flip over style books. I don't know. Forget Be Not by Anne Cassidy. Leader of the Pack by Kate Can, which I think I was a bit young to read when I read it. Prom Nightmares from Hell, which is by five different authors. It's five different short stories. Um, Alice in Time by Penelope Bush. Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. I was meant to read this as one of the six books. I was meant to read for English. I never read it. I don't want to particularly read it. Maybe I'll read it when I'm a bit older at some point when I'm an adult, but at the moment I really don't want to read it. Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Bray, which are an amazing trilogy of books and I have barely heard anything about them. They are incredible. Me and my best friend Lucy really enjoyed them, but I have not heard that much about them. So read these. They're really good. What's this? Curiouser and Curiouser. Um, I think which are poems. Then my Enid Blyton books, all which are really old copies that I've collected. Mystery Banshee Tower, Secret Island, Secret of Kilmore Castle, Children of Willow Farm, First Time at Malu Towers, Five Go Adventuring Again, and The F Adventurous Four, Shipwrecked, and Five Have a Wonderful Time, Naughty Girl at School, and Naughty Girl at School again. I love Enid Blyton. I still read her sometimes. She's an amazing author and famous hive was like my childhood oh and the islands of adventure which is another really nice copy that my gran gave me this is all my mallory blackman books i love mallory blackman um i started reading her books when i was about 13 and i seriously just love all her books so i've got pig heart boy hacker antidote pig heart boy is amazing noughts and crosses knife edge checkmate and then up at the shelf above this i've got the fourth one in the series which all three of these books say they're a trilogy and then she brought out a fourth one and the fourth one did not compare to the first three but it was okay stuff of nightmares also by mallory backman threads by sophia bennett what about law when i was thinking about what to do at university and um somebody suggested this book to look into law because apparently lots of my a-level subjects match law the l-shaped room by l reed banks which my mum recommended me reading and bought it for me it is an amazing 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 book and emma by jane austen okay and the last very top shelf even though i'm standing on a chair i still can't quite reach this high up so this is difficult double cross by mallory backman the fourth one in the noughts and crosses series 
Harry Potter and Philosophy, which is philosophical theories relating to Harry Potter, which is so good. Wuthering Heights, tried to read it three different times. I've never been able to get into it. Pride and Prejudice, really good. Poison Apples by Lily Archer. Flowers in the Attic and Pastels on the Wind, which were given to me um, as a birthday present by a friend because she really enjoyed them and she knows I like reading. Haven't got around to reading these yet because I'm still going at reading my Christmas books, but I'm looking forward to them. She said they're amazing. I'm Not Scared, Little Women, really good. And finally, The Five People You Meet in Heaven by Mitch Album, which is a book I read recently. And if you want a feel-good, lovely book, check this one out. It's really good. Okay guys, so that is the end of my bookshelf tour. I really hope you enjoyed this and I hope this video isn't too long. I haven't looked at how long it is yet, but I've talked for a while, so I know it's going to be quite long. But so many of you requested this, so I hope you enjoy it and please give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to see more from me and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys! Why is that the wrong way round? Are you in focus? Got the big cookbook cake first. Why are you all the wrong way around? What are you doing on my shelf? Get back in your shelf. Get back in your shelf. Get back in your shelf. Stop it.